Normalization against a reference gene circumvents the need for accurate quantification of the starting material. This is advantageous in studies where starting material is limited. The drawback is that the method requires at least one known reference gene that exhibits constant expression levels in all samples and whose expression is not changed by any treatments that are being investigated. The identification of such a gene is not trivial, and some have even proposed that, in most cases, the use of multiple reference genes may be necessary for accurate quantification. As with the unit mass method, at least one calibrator sample is required in addition to the test samples. The method also requires at least one reference gene and at least one target gene. The target gene is also referred to as the gene of interest. To use this method, you must first determine the expression levels of the target and reference genes in all sample types using RT-QPCR. We will demonstrate the calculation for the most simple experimental design, one that uses a single test and a single calibrator sample, and a single target and single reference gene. In this scenario, four CT values are determined. The three most common approaches to normalization against a reference gene are the LEVAC method, also known as the delta-delta-CT method, the delta-CT method using a reference gene, and the FAFL method. Each method has its advantages and disadvantages, as well as assumptions that must be met. The LEVAC method requires that the target and reference genes amplify with high efficiencies and that the efficiencies differ from each other by less than 5%. Most optimized reactions fall within these criteria. If reaction efficiencies are low, optimize the reactions and, if necessary, select different primer pairs. The LEVAC method is also called the delta-delta-CT, or double-CT method, because it requires the determination of two delta-CT, or difference in CT values. In the first step, normalize the CT of the target gene to the CT of the reference gene. In the second step, normalize the delta CT of the test sample to the delta CT of the calibrator sample. In the third step, calculate the expression ratio or fold difference. In this example of the LEVAC method, we examine the CT values for the target gene, P53, and for the reference gene, GAPDH. We examine the expression levels of these genes in a control sample, which is the calibrator, and in a tumor sample, which is the test sample. The CT values for each gene and for each sample are entered into the table. Next, the CT values of the target gene in both sample types is normalized against the CT value for the reference gene. To do this, subtract the CT value for the reference gene from the CT value for the target gene. In this example, we obtain negative values for both sample types. Next, we normalize the delta CT of the test sample to the delta CT of the calibrator. In other words, we subtract the delta CT of the calibrator from the delta CT of the test sample. The value obtained represents the change in expression of the gene of interest between the test and calibrator conditions normalized for any differences in loading between the reference and test samples. Given this delta-delta-CT value, next determine the fold difference in expression between these two genes in the two samples. Use this equation. In this example, the equation yields a value of 5.3, indicating that tumor cells express P53 at a 5.3-fold higher level than the control cells. Negative values indicate a difference in expression that is lower than the control sample. The delta CT method is a variation of LEVAC method that is simpler to perform but that generates essentially the same results. This method uses calculations for the difference between the reference and target CT values for each sample. It also uses an expression value for the calibrator sample that is not 1.0 which is the main difference between this method and the LEVAC method. It also generates results identical to those from the LEVAC method if the results are divided by the expression value of the calibrator. Using the same genes, sample types, and CT values we use to demonstrate the LEVAC method, 
we first determine the relative expression of the two genes for each sample using this equation. For the control cells, this yields a value of 2.8, and for tumor cells, a value of 14.9. These values represent the expression of p53 relative to gap dh in both samples. At first, these values appear to be very different to those we determined using the LEVAC method. However, a quick evaluation of the ratio between the two sample types reveals that the two methods generate the same results. The LEVAC method is useful only when the reaction efficiencies of the target and reference genes are similar. If these efficiencies are not the same, an alternative formula must be used to determine the relative expression of the target gene in different samples. The Fawful method uses the following equation to determine the expression ratio between the test and calibrator samples. E target and E reference are the reaction efficiencies of the target gene and reference gene, respectively. This equation assumes that each gene has the same amplification efficiency in the test and calibrator samples. The Fawful and Levac methods are closely related. In fact, the Levac method is a special case of the Fawful method in which the efficiencies of the genes are both 100%. In conclusion, for RTQ-PCR, data analysis requires data generated in optimized specific reactions. Absolute or relative quantification methods can be used. Of the relative quantification methods, the Fawful method is the most powerful, but it simplifies to the Levac method. The Levac method is the most commonly used relative quantification method. Finally, all data analysis methods are based on CT values, making them available for use with any reaction chemistry or platform. We hope that this tutorial answered your questions. For more detailed information about real-time PCR, refer to the Real-Time PCR Applications Guide, which is available for purchase from BioRad using the catalog number shown here. For more information and troubleshooting advice, visit the Gene Expression Gateway at biorad.com slash genomics. For further inquiries or troubleshooting assistance regarding the content presented in this tutorial, please contact the BioRad Life Science Group Technical Support Team at the phone number or email address shown here. Technical support is available in the United States Monday through Friday 7 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time. For local technical support offices, or to access the Frequently Asked Questions database, go to consult.biorad.com. Thank you for taking the time to view this tutorial. Your feedback is important to us. If you would like to share your comments with us, please use the email address shown here.